First of all, we want to wish everyone a happy new year and wish everyone the best in this year of 2022. We're going to call to order our finance committee meeting for this January the 3rd, 2022. Uh, before we go into tonight's business, we will have a special presentation from our mayor at this time, Mayor Marlon Coleman. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Let me say good uh, evening, everyone, and happy new year. Happy uh, 2022. We're happy to be here at this first meeting of the year for the uh, business of conduct uh, being conducted for the city of Muskogee. Before we start our regular meeting, we'd like to recognize our employee of the month, Mr. Jacob Ireland. Come on up, Jacob. So Jacob uh, began working for the city of Muskogee in 2013 as a temp for the street department. In February of 2014, he was hired as a full-time water district maintenance worker too. After being employed a little over a year, he was promoted to operator one, a position he held until last year when the position was regraded as a maintenance leader one. Due to the diligence of key personnel such as uh, Eric Time and Mike Stewart and Mike Miller. Jacob was born in Muskogee at Muskogee Regional Hospital, now known as St. Francis. In January, you want me to say the date? 1989. <laughs> that made a lot of the rest of us feel kind of dated. Um, <laughs> Jacob lived off of South 24th Street until the age of 10 when his family moved to the Webers Falls Warner area where he completed his education at Warner Public Schools. Jacob's hobbies include spending time with friends and family, weightlifting, and doing projects around the house with friends. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please help me celebrate our employee of the month, Mr. Jacob Ireland. Stand with me at this time. We'll start off with our invocation and our flag salute. Dear Lord, we come once again just thanking you for the gift of another day. We'd just like to thank you for giving us the blessing of seeing the year of 2022. Just ask that you would just bless each and every one of the members of our community as we get ready to go into this new year. Just ask that you just hold us and protect us in your love and in your care. Bless our city leaders as we come together tonight to discuss city business. Let all that we do be in your will and in your way. These are many of the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda item number one, please. Consider approval of Finance Committee minutes of December 6, 2021, or take other necessary action. Reviewing other minutes, are there any corrections or additions to our minutes? That's our approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve our minutes. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number one passes. Item number two, please. Consider approval of claims for all city departments, November 27th, 2021 through December 24, 2021, or take other necessary action. Do we have a report from the Purchasing Committee? Yes, the Purchasing Committee did meet this afternoon and we approve all the claims. I move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve our claims list. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item number two passes. Item number three, please. Consider authorizing the city manager to negotiate and execute a contract with Planning Design Group's proposal for landscape architectural services for the Grandview Park project is recommended by the Parks and Recreation Board or take other necessary action. Mr. Wilkinson? Mr. Chairman and committee members, I've just... Uh, I uh, want to update you on our uh, Grandview project. If you remember, it's been a long time. We, we applied, uh, brought this to you uh, about this time last year to apply for these uh, funds. Uh, we, we, we were awarded funds through the state 
uh, in t two grants. One was called the Recreation Trail Funds Grant. One's called the Land and Water Conservation Fund Grant. And there's $240,000 from each grant funding source. And then we have local funds that are part of that too. So it's a total of $780,000. Um, the uh, project has, we, we, we've received our grant agreement with the, with the trail portion of that. We have not received our grant agreement with the Land and Water Conservation Fund. These are federal funds that are passed through the state. The state selects the projects and then they, the, the, then they, uh, they take it to the, to the, uh, federal, uh, the, the federal side, uh, which they're awarded from. So for whatever reason, they haven't been awarded for the land and water. So that's what we're held up for while we haven't uh, moved forward on this project yet. Meanwhile, we've went ahead and gone through the process of, uh, to select a design uh, committee's uh, uh, company to, to work on the design for us as soon as we get approved. Uh, we started this back in the summer. We put out a request for qualifications. We had five firms that applied for the, uh, the job. Uh, the, we put together a committee. The committee graded the, the various uh, uh, consultants, uh, ranked them. Two of them came to the top. Uh, basically, the, the, they were one point apart from each other out of a 475, 474 out of a possible 500 points. Basically, they were both uh, ideal for the project. Uh, <coughs> we, we, the, we selected the highest ranked one, the one point higher, Alabac Design. We asked for them to submit a proposal to us for that. Uh, we received their proposal and worked with Jeff Reeves, our project manager, because I felt like uh, the fees that they were asking for were a little out of line, a little high. Jeff and I worked with them, gave them a chance to resubmit a proposal back to, back, back to us and uh, they, which they did, they didn't really reduce their fees. They gave us recommendations on how we could reduce the cost of our project so we could pay them the fees. So uh, we decided to go to the second choice, uh, which was planning design group, and that's what we bring to you before today. There's a, we've asked for the proposal from them, which they submitted, it's in your packet. Uh, planning design group is a firm that we've used uh, uh, several times in the community in the park system. Most recently, the Depot Green was a project that Planning Design Group uh, worked on. Uh, if, if you were, had a chance to look at the proposal, I think the total uh, cost of uh, the design services is $69,500. That's for a total of $780,000 um, total project to be done. Um, we took this to Park Board this past December. Park Board recommended the Planning Design Group. I've kind of told them the whole story. We've never done this before where we selected a, a firm and didn't come to an agreement on a cost. So we're, we've, uh, we're recommending that we go with the Planning Design Group uh, c basically because it's saving us a significant amount, uh, more money that we can spend in the park doing more construction in the park. Park Board recommended approval. We, uh, staff recommends approval. Thank you, Mark. I'm excited to see this project come to life. We've all been working on it for a long time, and it'll be exciting to have over in our area and for, for the. We're, we're really looking forward to it. It's a very, it's a unique concept that we're mm -hmm. wanting to do, and it's a 30-acre park of kind of a, a dilapidated right now. So we right. really need to get going on it. I, what I'm hopeful is that once we award, if we award this to PDG, that we're going to ask permission from the state to go ahead and proceed with the design work. The, the problem is, is the, 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 these grants, these federal grant monies, they're reimbursable. So if you spend the money before you have your agreement, they won't pay you back. So we have to wait for that agreement. We have one agreement. So what I'm hoping they'll do is allow us to go ahead and proceed right. up until the amount that, you know, that we don't want to exceed. We don't want to lose any money on the project. So exactly. Well, thank you. I move this. Uh, I move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, Mr. Wilkerson, I think it's good to highlight to the uh, audience that this is an adventure park, which is a little different than what we have normally seen in our other parks. I, I did fail to mention that. Uh, there's concepts, a new concept of the venture playground, uh, the bike park amenities, uh, which is a little different. It's, it's a very popular in other communities we don't really have. so. The, par the park will have that kind of a theme. and It'll be kind of a destination park for those type of activities. That's good. Not just for Muskogee, but for hopefully for the region. Right, because I think that puts us in a little bit of a 
advantage uh, for some of the surrounding areas that they actually have an adventure park, mm -hmm. uh, especially in an area that's uh, park recessed in terms of having those types of activities. So Correct. I think that's going exactly. to benefit us greatly. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call, please. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number three passes. Item number four, please. Consider approval for the Muskogee Fire Department to apply for the assistance to firefighters grant for communications equipment or take other necessary action. Chief Moore. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, committee members. Um, over the years, our communication equipment has uh, since dropped off and, and communicability and, and the uh, uh, process of getting our radio and equipment worked on is becoming more dire as uh, the days go by. So the department has applied for assistance uh, firefighters grant or AFG grant. We've uh, been up here before regarding fire trucks and, and other equipment. Um, to replace our outdated, <coughs> excuse me, equipment, portable radios, mobile radios, and our base units. Um, the current equipment is outdated. Parts are no longer available to make the much needed repairs. Uh, obviously, we're reaching a critical level with regards to communication equipment and the funds from the grant. Uh, <coughs> and their grant would assist with the purchase of new equipment. The total cost um, of the equipment is $319,920. Uh, with a grant writing fee of fifteen hundred for a total of three hundred twenty-one thousand four hundred twenty dollars, so that would be a ten percent match from the city, uh, which would total twenty-nine thousand two hundred twenty dollars. Um, I do recommend approval and be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Any move questions? For, move for approval. Second. Great opportunity. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, Chief Moore, if you don't mind, give us an idea. Um, what the cost per radio is? Uh, so again, these are our portable radios, um, which are basically our handheld radios, and then our units in our vehicles, as well as the base units at the station. Um, the portable radios are <coughs> around 3,400 a piece. So base units are approximately uh, about that same range as well, and then the base units are like six grand a piece. Thank you. I asked that question so that the committee could be uh, mindful of the fact that if this grant fails, um, we need to be able to have the appetite to move expeditiously to be certain that these equipment needs are met because if I'm not mistaken, we probably have the same issue with the radios and the equipment that are used by the police department. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, I know Muskogee Communications uh, has even purchased parts on eBay just to service our radios and our equipment. So obviously that's a pretty critical level when they have to do that. So, so if it's 300,000 for the fire, it'll probably be maybe 700,000 total um, to cover both departments. Absolutely. I just want the committee to have that information so that mm -hmm. if the grant does not pass, we need to have the appetite to be able to move forward in another yes, direction. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. <coughs> Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number four passes. <coughs> Item number five, please. Consider approval of lowest and best bid from Five Star Demolition LLC for $2.48 per square foot for the City of Muskogee Foundation and City Demolition Project or take other necessary action. Ms. Callahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, committee members. This is a demolition bid that we uh, published twice in the Phoenix and sent out to local contractors. We did receive two bids, Level Excavation LLC and then Five Star Demolition. This project was bid per square footage. That way we can switch out houses if um, they kind of get pulled at the last minute, which always happens. Uh, people decide to tear down themselves or um, want to magically fix them up at the last minute. Um, the uh, project does consist of the dilapidated structures that have gone through the process and that will qualify and that we are now doing a Santa Claus checking the list twice and Roy will then check it the third time um, and we'll make sure that it's all um, been through all of the process and they're ready to be torn down. Staff does recommend approval. The low bidder was $2.48 a square foot and it is um, foundation funding and also capital improvement funding. 
and we're hoping to have this uh, be a, an annual contract to where they can continue the demolition and possibly get some more funding into the next fiscal year and just keep moving along with demolition. Thank you, Trish. I had a question. How many houses have been identified? Um, I, I printed off a list of almost 300, but we need to make sure that we have all of those are kind of duplicates or they haven't gone through the complete process. So that's why we're double checking the, the list. Um, I could identify probably 30, especially those that have burned recently. Thank you. <coughs> I'll be recognized. Yes. I was wondering, Tish, do we still have the program, like if I have a house that needs torn down and the city tears it down, do we still have the grant pro process? That would need to be something to discuss. We did it in the past because it was grant funds from the Community Development Block Grant Program to where we matched it one-to-one. -one. And the, the city's match was, the grant part was what was waived on the demolition that half. So um, I've been really thankful the city clerk's office has had to kind of go above and beyond and keeping up with statements and sending out the billing invoices and people paying you know, the little bit each month, we at least got some income back. So it would be something that we could um, identify as a policy. It's not anything that's, because uh, these are city foundation funds and they're also capital improvement funds if they want to get full reimbursement on or not. I just wanted the citizens of Muskogee to know that they, we did have that in place at one time and, and you know they could take advantage of that because I know I would if I had a house that needed tearing down I would rather for the city to tear it down and then that way you know I would just have to pay half of it and the city you know take yeah, care of and half. we also offered a you know payments that they could make a payment because it's very hard to come up with say three or five thousand dollars in a lump sum and in order to keep their property in their name and uh, continue the maintenance on a vacant lot then um, for future maybe redevelopment, it was nice to be able to give them a chance to be able to make the payments and then lower the cost by a grant program. And also I have a question, like for, say for example, when the property goes up for tax sale, okay, and the city owns the property. Now for that demolition, they won't have to, they don't have, the person that buys that property don't have to pay for the demolition. That's knocked off, right? Well, it's not the city's property. It's not, uh, we don't own the property after the demolition. It's still the personal property owner's responsibility to pay the taxes and to maintain the property. But if they fail to pay their taxes and it goes up for a tax right. sale, I believe they have worked out to where we get the demolition back before we just, yeah, we are getting the demo. I'm hearing, seeing Tammy, hearing Tammy shake her head, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that um, before it was just the weeds, weed abatement fees, and this is good to be able to get back the demolition <coughs> fees on some of the properties that go up for tax sale. So the people at the tax sale that buys the property, they still have to pay for some of the demolition because I thought it was different. I'm, I'm not sure. I believe it's added to the cost so. of the bidding, starting bidding price of the property. And that, that's why it's important that if you um, own, still own the property and want to keep the property, that you pay the city because that by state statute, after six months, we're required to certify it to the taxes. And then that's the full amount. So this way, the payment plan and, and paying back, you know, the portion of the demolition keeps it off of the tax rolls. And so they're not having that big bill every year to pay off the demolition fees too. Now what I'm saying is after after four years a person can lose their property because of taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay the city if they like you know when the county gives us the lots and we've already tore our house down off those lots correct mm -hmm. that's what I'm talking about that they in the past the people didn't have to pay for that demolition they just paid you know a certain amount for the property and that was it. Right. So I'm just curious is it still that way? That I don't know. I don't I believe don't. it is. So I, I, I believe we recouped that. Through the city that. surplus grant plan, I would think. Yeah, uh, no Councilor Van, through the city, you're, what you're talking about is once the property is within the city surplus mm -hmm. program, which means that it has gone through the county tax sale and nobody bought it, and um, it is available. And so generally what would happen is someone identifies a piece of property that was sold at county tax, tax sale, was not purchased, which means the county owns it, Mm -hmm. They'll come to us and say, hey, we'd like to buy that. We send a letter to the county requesting that property, and when that comes over, they then just pay uh, the administrative fee because the county gives it to us for at no cost. That's what we're and about. that administrative fee, I think it's 365 something like that. And so in those instances, we do not recover any of the demo fee. Okay. 
That's what I'm trying to make a point that citizens should know this. We only recover it if someone else buys it at tax sale. Okay. I'll turn the floor back over you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any further questions? <coughs> Roll call, please. I don't have a. Okay, I'm sorry. For approval. Second. Second. All righty. Now, roll call. <laughs> Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jared Greed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item number five passes, <laughs> and with that item passing, the final item for our finance committee. Welcome to tonight's Public Works Committee meeting, January 3rd of 2022. Item number one, please. Consider approval of Public Works Committee minutes of December 6, 2021, or take other necessary action. Well, I had a chance to review the minutes. Are there any corrections, or do we have a motion? Move for approval. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McKee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item passes. Item number two, please. Hold a public hearing and take action on the approval of Ordinance 4148A to rezone property addressed as 2408 West Broadway, being more particularly described in the ordinance from C1, local commercial, to R1, single family residential, and if approved, authorize staff to revise the official zoning map of the city to reflect said change or take other necessary action. We will now open the public hearing. Ms. Callahan. Yes, this is a request from Haven House Incorporated. It is a nonprofit entity. Uh, Forrest Kirk, he's the former chaplain out at the VA hospital, has um, representing the Haven House. And it is a request to rezone the property. Its address is 2408 West Broadway. <clears throat> it has been a, excuse me, <clears throat> what they called a respite house for um, families that have families that are um, at the hospital at the VA. So it's been used residentially all these years, I believe they said from 2008. It's the inside has not changed to any commercial use. It has all just been residential, but because it was used as kind of a business for the respite care. Um, they have now decided to sell the house and in order to do so in the VA loan, it is required to get zoned correctly for its residential use, and therefore they're requesting a down zone from the C1 to the residential zone. The surrounding area is residential. There is some commercial on the corner, and the, of course a shopping center that's across the street, but we haven't had any uh, questions regarding it. Just curious as to what was going on. It's one of those that we don't usually down zone. We usually have either a higher commercial uh, zoning request, but um, this is to just clear up the paperwork to sell the property. Thank you, Tish. Move for approval. Second. We have to close the public hearing first. Close the public hearing. We have a motion, or a second and a motion. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jared Greed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. And the item passes. Item number three, please. Consider approval of Ordinance 4145A, amending the City of Muskogee Code of Ordinances, Chapter 78, Traffic and Vehicles, Article 3, Equipment, by adding Section 78-77, Coupling Devices and Towing Methods for Trailers, Semi-Trailers, Manufactured Home, or Towed Motor Vehicles, by providing for codification, repealer, severability, and setting an effective date, or take other necessary action. Mr. Tucker. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to turn the floor over to Ms. Bodenhammer, who will cover this item. Right. Thank you. Uh, pursuant to our periodic reviews of city ordinances, we are requesting the addition of a towing ordinance to be included in the language from the state statute so that we can prosecute mm -hmm. violations in our municipal court. This proposed addition to our existing ordinance adopts the safety guidelines for towing and coupling devices by providing for codification, repealer, severability and setting an effective date. We recommend approval of this ordinance amendment to add section 78-77 and I'm happy to answer any questions. Ms. Bodenhammer, what's the Cliff's Notes version of what this corrects? The Cliff Notes version is this corrects so that it will prevent citizens in our city from towing a car, for instance, with just a rope attached to it or towing a mobile home um, or, or like in one of those teardrop trailers, something like that where they just attach a single chain. This is gonna require a coupling device. Um, for instance, I have a, a trailer, a travel trailer. 
and it has a chain and it has a safety chain with a device that keeps it from swaying. And they're readily available at pretty much any auto supply store or camping equipment gear. And it's um, the, way, the way things are right now, we can tow something by just attaching a rope to it, which is not safe. Okay. And I, I do want to clarify something. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> towing by rope is still illegal. Uh, the problem is the location of where it can be prosecuted. And so uh, this has already been made illegal by state law. And so any violations are prosecuted in state court, not through our own municipality. However, if we adopt that provision within the code, then we can prosecute the violations within municipal court. And so we've taken the approach in reviewing our ordinances is anything that's illegal in state law that we can prosecute, we should be able to do that as well. So this is part of that process. Thank you. Thank you so are we saying that if we prosecute them from the metropology level, state also prosecute as well? Just one. Just one, okay. Yes. Uh, and what prompted the change, just updating the? We, we did a uh, legal review of all of our ordinances a few years ago and have been periodically going through and making modifications just as time allows. Uh, none of these things are uh, anything that are time sensitive because as I said, they're already illegal. Mm -hmm. uh, but incorporating this into our code, number one, helps the police officers because they're more familiar with our city code in most cases and can pull that up much quick, much more quickly uh, than they might be able to do for state law. Um, but of course, on some things, they're much more familiar on state law. Um, but additionally, if there are any violations, we can prosecute those and retain the fine ourselves rather than having to file those cases in the county and the uh, Muskogee County retains any of the fines. And what amount do we put on the fine? Is that state statute of the amount or is it something we set? It is something that our municipal judge sets. And so um, the amount for this will be, um, since it is a standard traffic ordinance uh, violation, it would be um, somewhere between 100 or $200 depending on what she sets. And so um, those ordinances, um, the maximum would be 200 plus cost would be 265 unless the judge decides to set it at 100, then it would be 165. Thank you. I have a question. So at the state level, is it a range? So in other words, if it goes to state court, will the judge say, here's the range that they can set, or is it a they set? Usually, they'll usually have a schedule. Okay. Um, I couldn't tell you what the fine is for the state, except all of theirs are about six times what ours are. <laughs> so it would probably be in the 500 range. Or, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. You're welcome. And Ms. Bodenhammer. Thank you. I have a question. What you described in your trailer was more kind of like a, a sway bar than safety chains, kind of just to keep it from going side to side. It's two separate things. You're just talking about the normal, they can't tow just from their chains from the vehicle or chains from a rope. I mean, when you're saying safety chains that are equal to or greater than the safety chains here, yes. you're not going to require another set of, I mean, Basically, what Trey is equipped with now should be sufficient yes. to meet this. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that because when you're describing with your travel trailer and stuff, I, I think it's kind of two different things. Yeah, there's saying. there's no specific requirement to add a, an additional attachment for swerving, okay. but it's required that things are towed to the point that they do not swerve. For instance, travel trailers already have a built-in mechanism. Um, this also covers if you if you're. Uh, I see this all, a lot of the times coming to work. I'll see coming down 62, people are towing mobile homes on trailers, and they have the specific devices to keep it from swaying or swerving. It helps prevent the towed vehicle from going into the, the opposite lane. Thank you. Thank you. Any Chairman, more questions? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'll be recognized. Yes. So it, I'll say it like this. I know I, I got a chain on my truck right now, and. Um, it's kind of old school, you know, where mm -hmm. you hook up and take somebody somewhere, like take them home. Say, for example, I got a neighbor, and they're out in a busy street, and they live probably about two blocks away. Now, if I hook my train chain with my truck onto their car just to get them out the street to keep a towing company from having to charge them, will I still get a t ticket? Yes, you will get a ticket. Typically, uh, you'll have a chain attached. Mm -hmm. For instance, that's, that is of sufficient strength to tow that vehicle, but you also need to have one of those safety cords attached that in case the chain comes unhooked or breaks, you have a second mechanism 
that keeps the towed vehicle hooked to the first vehicle. That's what I'm saying. If I got all that, I won't get a ticket? No, you will not get a ticket if you have all that. So I need to go buy a sway bar? No, sir, not a sway bar. Not a sway bar. Yeah, no. there's a, the, the secondary lines are, they're, I don't know how to explain them. They're like, tw they're like twisted okay. or twined metal. I understand. Yes, and then you have that with the chain. Okay. Well, I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at it from a poor perspective, like I've been here. If I got a problem, I mean, I can't, you know, can't afford a record. And, you know, and, you know, records are high when they come see you. Yes, they are. And uh, I was just curious, you know, if I'm just two blocks away from home and I had a neighbor who wanted to pull me to where I can get out the road, and in a bit, especially on the busy road, you know. It, the, it, you know. Yeah, and Mr. Van, what that, what that does is that protects you actually from even higher tickets, for instance, if, you're, if the towed vehicle breaks loose from your car. Mm -hmm. You're safer having that secondary device or that, that line cord versus just a chain. Okay, but it is, if I go get a line cord, I'm all right. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, you're welcome. Turn the floor back over to you, Ms. Chairman. Thank you. I just have one more question, Stephanie, if yeah. I could ask. Have we seen a lot of these cases here, Ms. <coughs> no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any more questions? Do we have a motion or a second? Move for approval. Second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jared Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Thank you, and the item passes. Item number four, please. Consider approval to authorize the mayor to prepare and submit a letter of support for the Echolink broadband project within the city of Muskogee and Muskogee County or take other necessary action. Ms. Sweezy. Good evening, committee members. This item is for preparing a letter of support to Ecolink for a broadband project. Uh, they are submitting to the state ARPA funding portal, much like the city is. This is a non-binding support letter, and there's no city funding involved. We're just supporting their project. Um, they are a subsidiary of East Central Oklahoma Electric Co-op. They are planning to um, submit funding for a grant um, in three different tracks and city limits. So this is a Muskogee County wide project they are working on. The map in front of you on your desk shows the three little tracks and it's kind of in the central, southern central area of town. So the brown part of the map shows the three tracks that they are submitting grant uh, application for and this does not block the city from supporting other providers who may do the same submittal to the ARPA estate project portal. Um, you may see an item next week from another provider for a new franchise. Um, and uh, staff recommends approval. Happy to answer any questions. Thank so, you. Maybe recognize. Yes. So on this map here, this goes, this is, I'm assuming this is 54th Street here. So if you live west of 54th Street, but you're in city limits, you, they won't come so, to our residents there? Or? Yeah, let me touch on this map a little bit more. The FCC um, data shows that Muskogee County has 30% of the population is underserved. So that means for broadband, you're getting less than um, three megabyte megabits up load speed and 25 down. So the areas that are not in the brown are already getting higher speeds. So that would be eligible areas to get the higher speeds put in. Which Thank is you. good. So yes. everybody in Muskogee will potentially have higher speeds. That'll, That'll be, be great. great. That'll be a great asset for the community. So clarify just these, these three blocks right here. Yes, those are census identified um, census tracts available for the grant funding based on speed, low speed, underserved areas. Mm -hmm. I believe Echo Link already services the no. area in the outside area. No, they mm -hmm. don't, because I mean, there's a lot of people right there in Scully's nose there. I get calls about that. This mm -hmm. is West there, 54th. There's a few uh -huh. neighborhoods right there that kind of go out that's in the city limits that Echo Link doesn't go to. Right there on the they, edge. Okay, yeah. Because we receive our services through OGE &E still. Mm -hmm. That's how we are. Yeah, so, I mean, I would like to see that kind of moved out to this, I mean. They do have um, a wider area that they are expanding on this side of the state, and I'm happy to send you links to those various maps. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Sure. 
these are just the, the pieces inside city limits that meet those definitions from the state. So Dr. Who's, would you like to see that before we approve or? What's our, is there a time crunch? It looks like does it actually have to happen today or? They, they're actually collecting letters of support from all the cities in the county and the area they service so they can still submit anytime. Well, it is, I'm okay with proceeding with the letter of support, but I would like to see us not neglect because there's quite a few people in our city that lives out there that would love to have the availability to get fiber internet access. So. Absolutely. Right, and that, pardon me, that's, that's one of the good things that's come through this, um, these discussions with this provider is trying to show them that there is that demand and interest within the city, and that's part of why they're applying for federal money to do it in areas where they can get federal money to do it, but they're, they're not limiting their potential expansion to just those areas. Okay, thank you. Right, how and do we it's get focused a, on the rural <coughs> areas. To Dr. Hoos's point, how do we get a direct communication to them so that they understand we're happy to provide a letter of support if they're happy to also provide what we're asking for? Yeah, because it, it, to go west of 54th would be still considered rural. I mean, you right there, I mean, that's... Going east of 54th, so, you get a little bit less rural. Going west of 54th, you get a little more rural. So. so so, what I would suggest is what they're doing is they're applying for areas where they're el there's eligible federal money. Uh, <coughs> and so what they would be partnering in in these other areas that we're talking about would not be part of the ARPA program. It would not, we wouldn't necessarily need a letter of support. They would just need a working relationship with us as far as uh, being able to <coughs> permit and license them to move and expand their services. Um, just like any other provider would. And we've basically what we've done is expand that conversation with them to say, uh, and for instance, we did that uh, out at Davis Field to get, uh, we're in the process of, of them expanding outside their usual area um, to help us get uh, broadband at the armory uh, for economic development purposes. And so those are part of those conversations that we're having with them. Again, completely outside of this grant request that they're making to the state because those, it's just different funding sources. Them being able to expand their offering um, in this way uh, in those areas of town is strictly because of available federal grant funding, but it's not their only way to expand. And they do have a letter of support from the county already for outside city limits. I would just ask them when we have that conversation to please include Dr. Hoos so that he can follow up with his questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any more discussion? Or do we have a motion in a second? Move for approval. Second. Roll call. <coughs> Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Motion passes. Item number five, please. Consider approval of an amendment to the contract between the City of Muskogee and Georgia Pacific to provide potable water recognizing its change of name to Georgia Pacific Muskogee LLC, specifically <coughs> for its Muskogee site to align with their legal entity structure of assets or take other necessary action. Mr. Beasy. Chair, members of committee, this matter comes before you really as a housekeeping matter. We were contacted last week by Georgia Pacific and they indicated that as part of a larger corporate restructuring, the name of the Muskogee area uh, plant legally would be changed to Georgia Pacific Muskogee LLC. This changes no terms of any contracts and also as a part of this process with Attorney Bodenhammer, we reviewed all of the contracts, amendments, and addendums that have been done over the years and we decided to clean them all up, put it into one agreement, recognizing the name change and all the former names the agreements and addendums were done under. And this will allow us just to acknowledge that the new corporate entity will assume all of the same requirements and liabilities and will receive the same services as they previously have. So this truly is just a matter of putting the right names on the right documents. Recommend approval and happy to answer any questions. Thank you, any discussion? Move for approval. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item passes. Item number six, please. Consider approval of amended City Council Policy 3-1-1, Affirmative Action for Fiscal Year 2021-2022, or take other necessary action. Ms. Cox. Madam Chair, members of the committee, this is an updated um, Fiscal Year 2022 Affirmative Action Policy. Um, a couple of things to note, I have um, 
handed out a new policy update um, that did not include um, one portion from Chief Jones. Since he has left, um, I did update that, and that did not get in this updated policy that was online. Um, so I have handed that out this evening. Um, but the major um, area to consider is the population drop in Muskogee. It dropped um, by about 2,000 people from the 2010 census. This was um, temporary census information provided in 2019. Um, this next year, when, my, when I do the revision, it will have the um, 2020 census uh, information updated. Um, the employment information has not changed dramatically. Um, it's all pretty much stayed the same. Um, the population drop of about 2,000 was about 1.1% male and 0.9% female um, for the whole population, not city employees, but population of city of Muskogee. Um, again, this is just a policy update. Um, this is presented to each year. I'm happy to answer any questions and recommend approval. Thank you, Ms. Cox. Any discussion? Madam Chair, yes, I sir. think it's important to the audience to note that uh, Mr. Miller and I will be in conversations with the Census Bureau uh, this week or next week because there's a process whereby if we provide the resources, we can participate to uh, retabulate those numbers. Um, because we firmly believe that because of COVID that there were many residents uh, in the thousands who did not participate uh, in the census accordingly. And so um, that number may change further, but I just thought we would mention that on Thank tonight. you for that. And that may be, if it's not updated soon, it may be the following year that that information yes. is included. Thank you for that information. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any more discussion? Uh, I had a question. When was the last audit? I'm sorry, the last audit? audit yeah. Um, each year, this is done in about June, um, and the in employment information was updated. I believe this one was June the 6th, um, 2021. And have we changed any of the practices since June 6, 2021? Um, since then, we have um, the new fire chief has come on board. He has done a little bit different um, recruiting mechanism since um, Chief Jones had left. Um, but since this policy was was originated from, um, should have been July, um, not a whole lot has changed. Moving forward, um, as we deal with COVID and continue to deal with the problems that we're having in recruitment, it could change moving forward. But um, this last year, it has not. Okay. Thank you. You're and welcome. The, I'm not done, Stephanie. Go ahead. The data that we get from Eastern Workforce uh, Board uh, the last data we got from them was 2014? That is correct. W why so long? Um, they, I have requested year after year to update that information to us. I have not been successful in obtaining that updated information. Um, they can pull pieces of it, but the data that was provided, if I can remember right, it was provided by um, Mr. Green back in 2014. I don't believe he is there any longer. And that access to that information, however they pulled it, is no longer available. Um, so that information will need to be modified um, in a manner that is Should consistent be. with our with our data. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? Do we have a motion and a second? I'll be recognized. Yes. I'd just like to say, I remember when I first came to city council, and that was back in 2005, a long time ago, right there at that mic. And I used to say to myself, when I come in the city hall, I'd, all, I'd look at the staff, and I am very pleased and happy to say in 2021, 2022, moving on, that we have come a long way. Because when I used to come up here, <laughs> right, it used to be just probably, it was two minor well, one minority was here named Shirley. She was over person. She was department head. And then Donnie came along. Remember him? You know, Donnie's still around. But I'm just pleased to see that we have, like, <coughs> Mr. Davis, Ms. Brittany, that's in the city manager's office. And I don't mean no offense to this. But look at our council. Look how blend, blended it is. That to me, affirmative action is diversity. And I am so pleased to see, and even the chief that left, he was a minority, you know. I'm just glad to see that we have came a long way since the first time I walked through those doors. And I used to mention that back to, in those days. And but like I said, I'm very happy that we are where we're at today. So I'll turn the floor back over to Ms. Turner. Thank you. Do we have a motion and a second, I believe? No. Move for approval. Second. second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. 
Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. Item number seven, please. Consider approval of the appointment of Perlin Boyata Craig to the Urban Renewal Authority, filling the expired term of Michael Todd Jones beginning January 3rd, 2022, and ending August 31, 2024, or take other necessary action. Deputy Mayor Reed. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, I have um, presenting uh, Ms. Perlin Boyati Craig. She is a uh, one who lives in our Ward 3 area. These are, this is one of the boards that you have to appoint someone from your ward. And you're talking about someone who uh, is willing to serve on committees and enjoys serving on committees. She found herself with a vacancy. So one thing we do is keep her busy. Mm -hmm. So I'm honored to uh, keep, her, keep her in the grind by uh, putting her on the Urban Renewal Committee. I uh, highly recommend uh, Ms. Perley and Boyati Craig and I make that my motion. A second. Any discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The motion passes. Item number eight, please. Uh, Madam Chair and Committee, before I read this item, I wanted to point out that the expiration date of this item is incorrect. So as I read the, the item, I'm going to put the correct date in there. So I would think any motion will have to be as amended. Yes, ma'am. Um, Consider approval of the appointment of Douglas G. Busey to the City Facilities Board, filling the expired term of David Ragsdale beginning January 3rd, 2022, and ending December 31, 2027. Deputy Mayor Reed. All right, I will amend that. Uh, uh, we call him Doug, Doug Boos. He is uh, another person uh, in our community who works hard in the community. We know him from the Three Rivers Museum area, so he is a uh, very familiar with uh, upgrading facilities and uh, wanted to serve uh, on this board. So I highly uh, uh, recommend and I appreciate his willingness to serve. Uh, and so with the amendment of to 2027, he's gonna be stuck a little bit longer than printed, but I uh, would like to appoint Mr. Doug Boos to the facilities board. Move. Is that yours? Yes, move Second. for approval. Roll call. <laughs> I be uh, recognized. Yes. Well, uh, <coughs> Deputy Mayor Reed, I'd like to say the reason he's like Miss Boyati and Mr. Boos, Mr. Boos work so hard is because they live in Ward Three. Is that what it is? The people working Ward <laughs> Three. Live in Ward three work hard. Hey. So I wanted to recognize, I recognize that tonight. <laughs> I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Sherman. Thank you. Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Sir. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The motion passes. Since there's no, no one has signed it to speak, this concludes the public works meeting. We will now call to order the special call meeting for the Muskogee City Council for January 20, January 3rd, 2022. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Alex Reynolds, Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Here. Item number one. Pursuant to section 307C11, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider <coughs> convening an executive session to discuss matters pertaining to economic development within the urban renewal project area and the northwest quadrant of the city of Muskogee, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. We will now consider a motion to go into executive session. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to convene an executive session. Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. <coughs> yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. We will now excuse ourselves into executive session. I'm going to ask that all of those who are not pertaining to this item, if you excuse yourself at this time. We will now read from executive session. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Alex Reynolds. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Mr. Tucker. Pursuant to Section 307C11, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss matters pertaining to economic development within the urban renewal project area and the northwest quadrant of the city. After being briefed on the status of an updated uh, potential uh, project, uh, I believe no, no action is necessary at this time. Mayor? Thank you, Mr. Tucker and members of the uh, council. We are adjourned. <laughs>